Potty Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about how to break in a brand new deck. And the reason why we're doing this is because I presented the question on my Instagram story and I asked you guys if you wanted to see this new deck that I got, which at this moment in time is the African American Tarot deck, which I've fallen in love with. You guys know I am so picky and so particular about the decks that I work with and for specific reason, which I'll explain in just a few minutes. But this is one of those decks that I really gravitated towards and for good reason, the artwork is phenomenal, but make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because, or go through my videos because I'm gonna be filming about, the, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing video for this deck, again, which I, I just absolutely love. And if you want to see some of my top favorite decks and deck recommendations, currently for 2018, because we're ending 2018, but really, I'm a Virgo, so I don't change that much. My favorites pretty much stay locked in to the same. I am more than happy to do that for you, so just give me a thumbs up or leave it down in the comments. But you didn't hear me, you didn't tune in today to listen to me ramble on about, you know, all these other things. Let's go ahead and talk about how to break in a deck. So this is for if you have a brand new deck that you're introducing into your life. The reason why I try to keep my decks pretty simple or, and by simple, I mean I try to stay almost like minimalistic with the amount of decks that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. This is because this is what I do for a living. I shuffle cards, I work with my intuition, I'm pulling charts, and I have clients all over the world that come to me for my intuitive readings, for my astrology readings, and for my tarot readings. So I, it's very important to me that I connect with a deck. And if you see me inviting in a new deck or working with a new deck, you better believe that there is something really special and unique about this deck. Now, the reason why that is, is because why I'm so particular about this is because what you're doing is you're building a relationship with your tarot deck. Now, I know some people don't see it that way, but also, no offense, I found that those same people probably don't give the best readings. I'm sorry to say that, but that sounds so harsh. But in reality, you know what? I really feel like in order for you to give a really good reading, you should totally connect with the energy of that deck and whatever deck that is or build a relationship with it over time. And the only way to do that with, with any relationship is by putting the time into that one thing and focusing your energy and focusing your intent on it so that it can understand you and you can understand it. Now, the tarot deck that I use, actually it's in my bedroom because I was shuffling with it last night, but the tarot deck that I use all the time is a mini Rider weight. I take two decks and I sandwich them together and that's the one that I use for myself and also for my clients time and time and time and time and time again. I shuffle multiple times a day, whether I'm shuffling for myself or for my clients, but either way, it's always around me. It's in the bedroom right now because Again, I was working with it last night and also this morning. But you'll see that deck is so worn down. It's so broken in. It's almost like folded because I use it all the time. But that deck has a personality of its own that is different than the other decks that I have. I have over 30-something plus, probably like 40, 30, 35, 40 um, tarot decks and oracle decks that I hold in my possession, but I do not work with them every single day. My Rider Waite deck is the deck that I work with every day, as well as Flowers from the Dead, which I'll link them all down below. And now this deck, the African American Tarot, which I'm gonna be working with, you know, multiple times a day. Well, I'm gonna start working with it more often. And then I also have another Rider Waite deck that is larger, the regular size, and the cards are pretty big and, you know, to shuffle with and to work with but I use that for my group pulls for the world. But either way, each deck really has its own personality and it has its own energy because it had, you know, you, me, me myself and I, <laughs> and this tarot deck have built a relationship and we have history together. So when I work with my tarot, my mini tarot cards, they understand me, they tend to be very cheeky, they tend to be kind of rude, um, I, I know that sounds crazy for those of you guys who are not, you know, into tarot or maybe you just stumbled on this video for whatever reason and you don't understand. It is what it is. I'm just full disclosure. My tarot deck that I use all the time is so rude to me sometimes. I've explained it to friends and family where they're, you know, 
I'm just like, it's really cheeky. You know, it will, it will read you. If you ask a question, it will snap at you. And that's just the vibe of that deck. It's, it's very forward with me. It's very honest, brutally honest, most likely. Um, and then when I'm working with my clients, it tends to be a little bit more gentle with them. And I just reveal the messages over clearly, but that's because we have a history with it. Now, this tarot deck, the reason why I'm saying all this is that this deck, the African American tarot, I literally just bought this just the other day. So outside of the fact that energetically, I feel like I resonate with it on an emotional level and a spiritual level, you know, logically, mentally, I... I'm gravitating towards it, but I don't have a strong connection with it yet. It hasn't revealed its personality because it's so brand new. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to break in a new deck, which I haven't done yet. And I'm going to do it in a separate, you know, outside when this video is over, I'm going to break it in. Although I did shuffle with these cards and pulled them just because I was so excited to get my hands on them and to work with them, of course. But anyways... One of the first things that I recommend when you pick out a deck is to allow yourself to just be grav to gravitate towards the one that you feel called to. Now, for beginners, I always recommend the Rider Waite deck, and that's, I just feel like every beginner tarot reader should have that in their collection because that's what all of us tarot readers use to, to build our knowledge. It's kind of like a language that we all speak, so if you're learning in different forums or if you're learning with different groups or if you're part of my Sacred Circle Tarot School, the links for that are down below, um, then we're all talking the same language, which is the Rider Waite. However, if you find yourself gravitating towards a different tarot deck, for example, when I first started my journey, I gravitated towards the Goddess Tarot. And that was because I was working a lot with Goddess Energy. I was working with my own feminine energy, which I was really struggling with at the time. This was years ago, over 17, 18 years ago. I know I look young, but I'm just being honest. That was the card deck that I worked with. It was huge. It was difficult to um, to shuffle with, but I, that's what I broke. You know, that's how I broke myself in, I guess, when it came, comes to tarot. But um, allow yourself to kind of be gravitated towards the tarot deck that you feel called to and work with it every single day. At the same time, if that's the right, right or weight, then good for you. But at the same time, make sure that you are also working with the right or weight. That way you're getting a better understanding of that that card deck as well. This is one of those card decks that just gravitated towards, to, that I naturally gravitated towards. Now the reason why I'm saying this, and I feel like I'm kind of deviating away from the point, the topic of this video, which is how to break in a tarot deck, but I want to cover all of my bases. I'm sorry, I'm a Virgo, I'm very thorough, I'm a perfectionist, and I want you guys to be informed. But um, the reason why I say this is because when you deviate away from the rider weight, you know, these interp the artists that create those tarot decks, they have their own interpretation of that tarot deck, which may, the meaning of it or the energy of that card may, the symbolism of it may change depending on that deck. But the rider weight, it stays the same. It creates this strong foundation for you to build upon for any tarot deck that you eventually throughout your life find yourself gravitating towards or picking up and adding to your collection. So that's one thing that I found with this tarot deck, which because I have over 20 plus years with working with the tarot multiple times a day, and this is what it is that I do, me adding on to my collection with this new deck actually helps me to deepen my own practice by listening to the interpretations that others are given, um, that others are giving and what others have found because it adds on to what I already know and what I already understand and what I've already experienced by studying the tarot, the, the basic tarot for years. So that's why, again, I'm saying, you know, move first with the rider weights and then in conjunction with that, gravitate towards, find yourself being pulled and called to the, the tarot deck that stands out most to you. So the African American tarot deck, again, this is a picture of it by Jamal, Jamal R. Thomas Davis. Whoever this person is, you know what, holla at me. You did a phenomenal job with designing this tarot deck in general. And I was very intrigued by just sitting with this tarot deck, which I'm gonna do an unboxing video. I don't know why. Okay, I'm gonna take a step back, but Jamal, whoever you are, you did a phenomenal job with designing this tarot deck. And then, you know, look out for my next video, which I'll be talking about it, like doing a total um, unboxing. But when you personally, <laughs> back on track, when you find the deck that it is that you love and that you're gravitating towards, there's a few things that I do for every single tarot deck outside of sometimes the moments where I impulsively just start shuffling through it and looking through it. But I will use Sage. 
in order to burn and well not burn the deck but burn any energy that is lingering around it I don't care if this deck is brand new or if it's used but especially if it's been used if you get a used deck off of, off of Amazon or wherever or it's given to you from a friend I highly suggest burning you know sage in order to cleanse deeply cleanse the energy that is lingering on that tarot deck because it's now it's yours and it needs your energy it doesn't need anybody else's energy on it have I purchased a used tarot deck before have I been given um, tarot decks or oracle decks that someone else has used absolutely and I would do it again and I have no regrets with that I don't have any bad experiences with it I would do it multiple times I just and sometimes I almost prefer it but if that is truly the case, I sage it multiple times, usually three times. Even if I sage it a good time, you know, one good uh, sage cleansing session when I first get it, and then I, you know, the next day I reach out for it, I still sage it. Then the next day I do a sage session three times with that tarot deck, and that's when I find that energetically it does seem to be a little lighter in energy, clear, and like almost hitting the reset button. Now, why do I suggest sage? Well, because in versus Palo Santo or any of the other, um, you know, herbs that you would use in order to cleanse something, including rosemary, because sage has this wonderful way of totally releasing and cleansing and removing all energy, good or bad. It's the way to create a blank slate versus if you use Palo Santo or rosemary, sometimes that energy kind of lingers or it kind of leaves, even the good stuff kind of is still around that tarot deck. And I just feel like you should have a you know a, a total blank slate with it unless there's some type of emotional connection to it for example let's say your great grandmother is a tarot reader and she, this was the deck that she used and you still want her energy to kind of linger on that I would use Palo Santo I would I would and I would just allow that would just be the deck that I work with that I know that my great grandmother is you know working with me alongside with me because her energy is so connected with that that's the only time when I wouldn't sage, completely sage that deck is when you have something like that, like an emotional connection to it that you really do want to linger. But if it's someone that you don't know and you really want to get a fresh start, use sage and do it three times. So once you've done that, I then, and you speak while you're saging, you're asking the energy, your angels, your guides, you're calling in the divine energy, you're calling in angelic energy, your, your guides energy to come in and completely cleanse and bless this deck for you and to remove any lingering energy or any lingering vibes and just welcoming it in. Then the next thing is to take something as simple like incense or Palo Santo and this is when you bless the deck. So sage is when you're removing the energy and now we're going to bless the deck. This is when you are burning that um, essential, not essential oil, but it could be essential oil, but you're burning that incense, you're burning that Palo Santo, whatever it is that you're using to bless the deck um, and to welcome it in. Um, you use that energy, you use that smoke, and with each card, you are saying a prayer over it and introducing yourself and just saying like, you know what, you know, I invite this card, these cards in, for my highest and greatest good. We're gonna be working together. And I believe that prayers don't have to be anything too intricate, intricate or elaborate. Just speak from your heart. At the end of the day, it's like you're talking to someone that it is that you love. You don't need to put fluff on it. You don't need to put flowers on it. Just speak clearly from your heart. Speak the truth. You know, we're gonna be working together. I wanna to be able to connect with you. I ask that, you know, all of you know, what your purpose here to serve is going to be for my highest and greatest good and that you provide clarity and insight into my life, that you are be open to building a connection with me and that I be open to building a connection with you. I ask that this bond be strong. I ask that this deck be sacred and whatever it is, fill in the blank and continue and then so shall it be or so mote it be or whatever it is that you want to say in order to end it and then I know this sounds crazy, but then I take um, Florida water, bless Florida water. So this, you can find this at Walmart, especially lately. <clears throat> Here in New Orleans, you can find Florida water at CVS and Walgreens. I'm not even kidding. But this is because we use this <clears throat> so often in the spiritual community. And New Orleans is known for its spirituality and for blessing and whatever. But these, when you get these bottles, when you buy this bottle for yourself, make sure that you bless it. I personally will bless it under the light of a full moon. I'll put crystals around it, quartz crystals around it, and that's my charge soak. I do this every full moon. Even if I'm about to run out, there's a full moon. I grab two bottles and I charge both of them. That way I always have this on deck. 
The other thing that you guys see me doing a lot is I always have like a head tie, a handkerchief that I tie around my head. I'm pretty much notorious for or known for always having my hair tied back just because, I don't know, as a child, I always had these like little flyaways and I, I didn't really like them. Now I love them. I love my little flyaways. But as a spiritual worker now, I use it to protect my, to protect my sacral chakra, I'm sorry, to protect my crown chakra and to absorb energy. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it just makes me feel protected. And as a sensitive, as an empath, I'm just, and just being in the environment that I'm at and that I'm in, I just really protect my crown chakra. And that's just one of the ways that I do it. Even though my whole head isn't covered, it's still there adding a, a, another layer of protection. But the reason why I'm saying that is my handkerchiefs that I use to tie around my head, they stay around my crown ch chakra throughout many days. And I pull it off, I um, use the Florida water, and I, you know, go like that. I don't know what the word is for that, but I kind of, not douse it, but sprinkle, I guess, a little bit of this cologne on, or the Florida water, the blessed Florida water on the handkerchief, and I will use it to wipe down the front and the back of each tarot deck. As I'm doing that, you know, basically what you're doing is when you originally bless that Florida water, you create, at least what I do is I use that for blessing, for purification, and for connection with the, with the divine. So the energy of that is within the bottle as well as the same thing what I do with my essential oils when I'm making not essential oils with my intent oils when I'm making you know conjure oils or intent oils that I use for love spells for prophetic dreams this is what this one is for transformation I've been using my Pluto death oil so much lately oh my gosh and the money and abundance oil whatever but I mean not whatever to the money and abundance oil it is really powerful but you know, that just seems to be coming in, so I just kind of allow it to be. If anything, I just, you know, I use, I work with the Pluto death oil in order to transform anything that needs to be, you know, stagnant for it to be completely released. But, and the same thing when I work with lunar intent oils, oils that happen with the full moon that can only happen one time. Um, the same thing that I do with those or the same thing that I do with the Florida water. You're, you're blessing them. You're capturing the energy of what's going on in the cosmos. You're setting intent over them so that you can use them for a specific purpose later on multiple times without an expiration date. So that's what you'll get when you're working with the Florida water when you're blessing, using it to bless your tarot deck. Because when I blessed the Florida water and I set intent for it, my intention was to make sure that that Florida water would, you know, bless and consecrate and you know, anoint my tarot deck or whatever item that it is that I'm using, whether it be my journal, whether it be a quartz, whatever it is, myself, if I'm having a day or if I just feel like it or if I'm entering into my sacred space, I will use a Florida water because it's already been charged. I don't recommend, I mean, feel free to do you, but everything has attention for me. Um, I don't recommend just buying this off the shelf and just using it and dousing it. To me, it just doesn't have the same energy. How could it? There's no intent connected to it. There's no magic connected to it. There's no lunar energy. There's no essence. There's no specific purpose for it. So at that point, it's just this regular cologne water that you can just splash on yourself for a scent or perfume. It has no symbolism. It has no meaning. It has no significance. So make sure that you bless the Florida water, that you're not just kind of like sprinkling it all over whatever and just be like, oh, it's blessed now. It's not. You have to pray over it. You have to set intent over it. That's what magic is. That's what intention is. Anything can be sacred if you make it sacred. If you hold it with intent and infuse it with your will, that's when it becomes sacred. Woo! We are going through it today, aren't we? Wow, I'm on fire. Okay, so... As you're moving through each deck and you're wiping it down with a handkerchief or a sacred cloth, you choose. Everyone is different. Um, I remember even years ago, you know, when I was studying the tarot, I went to a tarot teacher. Or when it, she wasn't really a tarot teacher, but she had more experience, extensive knowledge. She was in Florida. And she's probably passed on now. She was very old then. And this was years, years, years ago. So 16 plus, 18 plus. But she told me, she's like, you need a specific cloth in order to, you know, put it out for your tarot deck. And she said, you don't have to get them here. I, she recommended me to a place that had antique cloths and stuff like that. And I went to go look, and she was right. You know, they did, did, they did have unique, you know, cloths and stuff like that. But, you know, just being a simple Virgo and just, it's all about sentiment, like sentiment to me. I had a handkerchief that I always had on me even to, to that day. I used that in order to cleanse my 
my deck and I still do it to this day, not even realizing that I was following my intuition and that this would be a part of my daily, daily practice and that was only just the beginning. And again, this was like 16, 18, 19, 20 plus years. I don't remember how long it's been. But anyways, as you're wiping down each deck lightly, um, look at each card and really take time for this. This could be like an hour, an hour and a half, but this is sacred time. This is a special time. This is you connecting with the deck. I feel like it's very rude to come in and to start shuffling and asking questions immediately from a deck because you're asking so much from it when you haven't given anything in return. You're not seeking to understand it. You're not seeking to connect with it. You're just shuffling. Sorry, I just saw this like little fire thing here for a minute, but I think it was my incense. But you're just you know, picking it up and being like, tell me, tell me, tell me. And I just find that being really rude. That's like walking up to a stranger and be like, what's my future? It's like, yo, hi, hello, how are you? I feel like the tarot is still the same way. Also, the tarot is a tool to connect with your divine, to connect, to connect with the divine, to connect with intuition, your guides and your angels. And you wouldn't, you know, you know, jump in their face and be like, talk to me, tell me, blah, 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 blah. That's rude. So the same thing is true with the tarot. So just take time to look at each one of the cards while you're wiping them down and maybe taking your journal, which this is my journal here, one of many. I have boxes and boxes. You know those bins, those Tupperware bins that you use to like store Christmas decorations in? I have bins filled with journals from before I even started my tarot journey. So this is my entire life. I started journaling when I was nine or 10, when I could write is when I, or maybe 30, I don't know, but when I was able to write complete sentences and thoughts, I was journaling. But this is my current journal right now, which started in, let's see, July 2018. So this is pretty brand new. I have a lot of things in here, actually. I'm pretty much sure that I have intentions, tarot polls. See, this one's from August 5th, 2018 at 9.24 p.m. Oh question I asked. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, see, now I want to go back and look at this. I want to cry. I get so, oh my god, the outcome was page of, I'm not going to share it. Oh, I got to put a bookmark here. That is so special. I'm sorry, guys. See, this is why. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, September 24th, 2018, 10.26 p.m. was a prayer. I did it! Dear God, angels and guides, I did it! I'm in beautiful New Orleans on the night of this full moon. Thank you for helping me to get here. Please, please continue to look after and protect me while I'm down in New Orleans. Let this city be so good to me. And it was... Ah! I'm gonna cry! Oh, my God. See, I'm sorry, you guys. And then there's this intention. So I like full. I don't know why I'm so emotional. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so emotional. I just am. I'm sorry, you guys. So all of my, it just means so much to me. All of you know. But so as you're going through your tarot deck, which I'm gonna do, and I'm probably gonna whatever. But you know, look at each card and see how it makes you feel. This is a magician. You guys always know. I always pull the magician card. I always pull the magician card. The great creator. I'm just feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm really having a moment. Okay, Ten of Cups. Wow. And I just write down how they make me feel. And if they, you know, if it makes me feel something, obviously it's making me feel something today. But I write down each one of those cards. Well, each, each of the cards that make me feel something. This is an intent that I wrote down. So I'm going to put this on my altar, my temporary, my temporary altar for now. Sorry, that was rose quartz just knocked over. But anyways, yeah, write down how they make you feel. If they trigger any feelings or emotions and, you know, whether it inspires you, what does it make you think of? And again, this is why, you know, with the Rider weight, you know, it's, you know, what is what stands out to you as far as symbols? That's something that I really look at with the Rider weight. And again, if you want to dive into that, I have the Sacred Circle Tarot School. The links for that will be down below. But with such special decks, the ones that it's that you gravitate towards, oh, I'm feeling it still. Um, but special decks that you gravitate towards, the African-American Tarot for me right now, 
you know, this is me looking at the pictures and the symbolism, like this rainbow for the Ten of Cups and the snake head right here. Like, what does that mean? And all of these people rejoicing and the community coming together. And then the ancestor, for me, I look at these little spirits in the, in the sky as ancestors and the connection to the ancestors. The magician, you guys always know, always comes up for me because essentially that's ultimately who I am, is the magician, the alchemist, um, energy work, high priestess, whatever. That's another card that comes up for me and the empress as well. So, yeah, I just look at each of the cards, and I'm going to be doing this for myself. I don't think that you guys want to listen to me talk about, you know, my experiences with each one of those cards. And also, it's very personal, but the video would, I'm sure, be like an hour and 30 minutes long, probably two hours, because the process is pretty long and significant. But look at this Nine of, Nine of Pentacles deck which card, which I've been really resonating with lately. Oh, my gosh. So beautiful. Oh, gosh. And my last thing that I want to tell you guys to do is to shuffle every single day and to write it down. That's the best way, ultimately, in order to connect with your deck. A new deck is to shuffle every day or as often as you can. The more that you work with it, the better, the faster, the quicker. I feel like your guides, your angels, your tarot deck appreciates the effort that you put in to connecting with it. Oh, wow. I've been really thinking about the Five of Cups lately, too, and the Four of Four of Swords. Wait, and so so interesting, so interesting. But yeah, shuffle with it every day, and then do your do a daily card pull for yourself. Even if you know the tarot in and out, but especially if it's a new tarot deck that has you know different symbols and different meaning and different interpretations. So oh look, the Empress. I've been pulling this card left and right, and I swear to you guys, I'm not pregnant. I promise, I'm not pregnant. But I really am in this like Empress energy vibe lately, obviously. But yeah, and then journal and write it down and then go back to it. I love you guys. I love you. <laughs> Make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because I'm going to be doing an unboxing video, which obviously this card deck has already been unboxed, but I'm going to be giving my thoughts, my feelings, my initial reactions to it, even though I've already had my initial reactions, but I remember my initial reactions. And um, if there's other videos that you guys need to see that we need to talk about, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Yes, I look at all of my comments, even though it takes me some time. I do run my shop, my apothecary, and I do do the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which is going to be opening again and open for enrollment and stuff. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Wow, what a life that we live. I'm so sorry to yell, but like, wow, I just feel so much today, all this week, all this week, all this weekend. And uh, yeah. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.